Hey everyone, we try to do build logs for all of our systems, but they do add a lot of extra time, mainly if there's a lot of B-roll and with the way I like to do things, with no mess in the background, you know, not even any tools really, there's a lot of setting up and taking down in between, and it just really comes down to customer requests. If the customer is willing to donate the extra time for a build log, then we certainly do. If not, that's fine, but I'm going to start doing videos on those systems anyway. I have a little bit of time with this one. It is about to ship, but I thought I'd just take a bit of time to have a quick look around. And what I thought I'd do here is, well, I'd like to do a video on the overclocking settings for this one because I did manage to get it to 5.3 gigahertz. It's quite an amazing 7700K. But yeah, this video is going to be what you would usually see in the final part of the build log, like a, a look around the finished product with all of the details on the loop and the custom cables and the lighting, basically everything that I've done here. So this is for the people who are actually interested in building systems and they want to see what I've done, some of the intricacies. I'm basically just trying to answer questions that I think that people are going to have about this system. And then what I'm going to do is another video which will be B-roll and that will actually just be B-roll and music and then it will have the performance and temperature results. Now don't worry, this will not be the new format or anything, it's just something that I'm trying out to see what people think because there's always that pressure just to do what everyone else does which is you know b-roll and music but yeah it's just a one-off. I thought it's kind of better than nothing because otherwise this system would have just shipped without any attention. So let's start with the core components. We have an Intel Core i7-7700K which I've delittered. It's currently running at 5 gigahertz and that's probably what I'll ship it at because the customer is not putting a whole lot of importance on high overclocks, but if they were, I'd probably spend a bit more time on the testing and ship it at 5.2 because I definitely think this chip can do 5.2 24-7 stable because I have had it at 5.3 fully stable at 1.45 volts with temperatures at about 82 degrees Celsius max, but that's at an ambient of 37 degrees Celsius. So imagine if the ambient was 20 degrees Celsius. We have the MSI Z270 SLI Plus. We have a 32 gigabyte kit of Corsair Dominated Platinum Special Edition. And this is the Blackout, which is just stunning memory. I absolutely love it. And by the way, what this build is, it's actually a Radium Blackout. No, I haven't copied the Corsair Dominator. I actually had the name long before for the different Radium themes that you can select, the different color schemes. Now, I really like this color scheme. If I were to build my own system right now, I would do a full blackout theme with as much black as I possibly could. This one still has quite a bit of silver, but what I would do for mine is I would use the Singularity Computer's Proteum Acetyl Black. So the cap there would be acetyl, the ring would be acetyl, pump top acetyl, the cover would be black. I'd do black reservoir mounts. I would do acetyl water blocks, you know, just as black as it can go, probably even black fittings as well. Although I do love my black sparkle and I don't think I'll ever be able to get away from those. We have a 960 Evo one terabyte, which you can see I have the Aqua Computer Cryo M.2 heatsink for, just the passive one there. And that's actually a nice position for it there because you can see the the heat sink and it, yeah, it kind of adds to the aesthetics. We have two EVGA GTX 1080 Ti's. For the power supply, we have a Corsair HX 1000i. The radiators, we have EK Slim 360 millimeter. We have Singularity Computers Proteum uh, Medium Reservoir, polished acrylic silver, and. Uh, Proteum DDC mod kit, again polished acrylic silver. We have a, an ethereal 120mm backplate there with direct mounting to the pump. And you can see how close this has ended up here. I mean, this is not the first time I've done this configuration. I also did it in Silver Tide. But we've ended up just a couple of millimeters away from the mid plate. So, yeah, this configuration with the direct pump mounting to the radiator has allowed all of this to fit without modifying the case, without modifying that power supply shroud, which I was very happy about. You know, I couldn't actually fit a D5 in here, so we had to drop back to DDC and do the direct mounting. But at the top here, we have an ethereal silver single, but it's not actually needed because 
with this direct mounting and with the fittings at the top, it's actually fixed anyway. But for the extra strength, I mean, this is being shipped a very long way to the other side of the world. I thought I would still add the extra mount. So as usual, EK nickel plexi water blocks on the graphics cards with black back plates and an EK Supremacy Evo water block. Just the single loop in this one. This case really does do a lot better with a single loop. It kind of looks a lot cleaner. Dual loops, it really starts to get crowded in here. I mean, if you take a look at Radium 2, we can still get it really clean, but yeah, it's not really necessary in such a small case with a low component count. So yeah, I was actually quite happy with the way this loop turned out. It's quite similar to Silver Tide. Very, very similar spec actually to Silver Tide. Only a few minor differences in the components. I use Bits Power 16 millimeter acrylic tube for this one. It's not PETG. I much prefer acrylic. The clarity is better. Chemical resistance, you know, it's going to probably probably last longer, but it just bends a lot better for me. You can lay into it with the heat and get it really, really hot so that it just bends however you want it to. And it just holds its shape better. It doesn't deform in the bends like PETG does. And yeah, better clarity. It doesn't have those lines in it and doesn't have that kind of whitish look to it. We have MDPCX carbon BTI sleeve, which I've mentioned a couple of times is my favorite. I absolutely love it. And it really goes nicely with the blackout theme. So you can see that I've done the same thing here with the cables that I did in Silver Tide. We've gone down through the power supply shroud and yeah, I've, I've had to lay them next to each other. And that's because this slot isn't really big enough to lay them on top of each other. Well, it's not at all. This is really the only way you can do it. Kind of twisting them around at a 90 degree angle. But it, it just works really well and they sit there really tightly. The 24 pin actually fits nicely due to the placement of the 24 pin connection on the motherboard. And yeah, you can barely see the EPS up there behind the radiator. Some mods to the top panel, which I always have to do in these Fantex cases to fit. So this is the Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX. And it's actually not the tempered glass, this one. It's just the a, a black version. But yeah, I, I've had to modify this top panel. I actually have a separate video on this. So check that out if you want to know how to fit two 360 millimeter radiators into this case. The only radiators that will actually fit like this are the EK Slim radiators. And you can see, you know, they're actually still touching there. It's still an extremely tight fit. That one is actually touching at the bottom. And yeah, this one is pretty close to the back as well. Extremely tight fit to get these two in here, but it's really worth it. It's a great mod. I've also done a mod to fit the Aquero 6 XT here. The Aquero is a great addition to any liquid cooled build. Right now I'm running fan curves and just take a listen to this thing. So if you can actually hear anything, the main noise is probably coming from the pump. But yeah, with the fan curves, I've based the fan curve on the coolant temperature. That is something that is really important. You should always base it on the coolant temperature and not the component temps because it's obviously the coolant that the fans are actually cooling most directly. You know, if you base it on the component temps, then maybe it takes half an hour for your coolant to even heat up one degree and you'll have the fans going at 100% when your coolant doesn't even need that kind of attention at that point. So I, yeah, I think overall it's going to be quieter and more consistent if you base it on the coolant temp. So these fans start at 0% at 15 degrees Celsius and they go all the way up to 100% at 45 degrees Celsius. So that's the temp of the coolant. You know, it's going to take a lot to get that coolant up to 45 degrees. Right now it's sitting one degree above ambient. So ambient is 37, coolant sitting at about 38. We have Corsair SP 120 millimeter fans and I've actually painted the fan rings black for these. So we have a fab work in this build, which is running RGB lighting as well as the Aquero 6 XT. So you can see that I just have a couple of LED strips and they're cycling through RGB colors right now. There's one just in this back corner here. 
And there's actually one like directly underneath here, which is really hard to get up into position because it's right up behind the radiator and the tube, but a really good spot for it. So let's take a look at this loop. We have the drainage system coming straight out the side of the Proteum pump top, which is awesome. You know, having all of these inlet outlet options means that you can actually do things like this. You can use one for a temp sensor, one for the drainage system, and then you still have an inlet and outlet on the pump top. So you can actually run back to the pump top instead of going back to the top of the res if you need to or if you want to, you know, even with all of the extras. So this one has a slight offset and it comes down to the bottom of the graphics cards. And here I've used a 90 degree fitting. Then we have a parallel configuration between the graphics cards, another 90 degree single rotary, then a 90 degree dual rotary to get a slight offset to line up with the inlet on the CPU water block, 90 degree single, 90 degree single. So quite you know, a simple loop in terms of fittings here. I've managed to do the bends in such a way where we really didn't need that many. And single loop in this case, yeah, you kind of don't need a lot of fittings except up in this corner here. Another 90 degree single. To get up around the back there, a 90 degree single, 90 degree dual, and another 90 degree single. And that gets us our direct run, kind of half of the tube out of sight, which, yeah, I really like that aesthetic actually, still being able to see that tube instead of fully hiding it. And what do we have up the back there? You can barely even see it. It's a 90 degree dual rotary, a T-fitting for the temp sensor. That was actually the only place that I could put it because these temp sensors are too deep to fit into that back port. I could have put it in that front port just there, but I didn't want it to be visible. So then we have a 90 degree dual, a 90 degree single, and another 90 degree single. And in between those two is a mini D-plug. So that's actually quite easy to get apart. And then for the full port, 90 degree single, 90 degree dual. Now, I've had to do that with the full port because I had no choice. I had to run the flow back to the top of the res to that side. It was just the only way that I could do this and get it to work. Otherwise, you know, the, the fittings just weren't going to make it happen. And what it means is the fill port is in the flow of the loop, which just makes it a little bit difficult to fill, but it was better than the alternatives that I that I experimented with. I tried the Proteum triple port cap as well, and it was just even more fittings. So it worked well with the quad port cap like this in the end. Okay, so let's take a look at what I've done with the cables. So I've already mentioned the cables on this side. So you can see with my fans, I always do the same thing. I run, tuck the cables in down the side of them, and then run them all into a, a splitter. And as usual, this is a Mod My Toys splitter. And these are actually three pin fans. So this is a three pin to three three pin splitter. Same thing up the top here. So there's the fab work, which is bolted to the top panel. You can see there's quite a lot of cables coming from that. So yeah, here's the other splitter and then that cable there and that cable just there go into the back of the Aquero, which you can't really see, but yeah, it's over the other side there. Quite easy to access because you can get your hand under all of those cables there, which is, you know, the PCIe that curves around and then goes up through the power supply shroud. So yeah, you can see, despite the extremely high-end liquid-cooled system, there's not a lot going on back here. Just the 24 pin in the middle. On this one, I decided to run the EPS around the outside, which makes it a bit longer compared to running it up the middle there. But I don't know, I always like to do something a little bit different and it kind of works well running it around the outside as well. And this is actually not going to be visible in this case because it's not the tempered glass version. So we have that bundle running down the middle there from the fab work and also from the front panel and there's also this LED on the front here. The USB 3 unable to sleeve as always. I would like to find a way of doing that at some point but yeah currently it's just really quite impossible. And it's pretty much it for cables. So a couple of spaces there for SSDs. You can also put a hard drive in the bottom. So some possibility for 
yeah, some future storage upgrades because right now there's only the Samsung 960 Evo, one terabyte. 